<clears throat> What's going on guys? Joey here. I'm walking today, so hopefully it sounds pretty good because I got my wired headphones. Um, I had a interesting little discussion with one of my lifters. I think I've probably covered this before many, many moons ago, but I thought it would be pretty good to talk about here. And basically what we were talking about is uh, they asked me about an accessory and I don't want to even name the accessory because people get so like touchy about it and it's like it's not even worth it um, I just want to get my point across but it's an accessory that's been like it's been pretty hyped up here and there and in the past I mean this has happened with all kinds of different things um, you know like oh man like you know back extensions are the reason I'm able to do X, Y, Z or, you know, uh, dips or uh, fucking hack squat, um, pendulum squat, you know, just whatever it is. You see, it, you, there's like a guy on social media and he'll, he'll do an accessory with like something that like people haven't really seen or it's not like too common, but like in reality, bodybuilders have been doing it forever. And then um, that guy will be good at a particular lift. And then everybody will think like that's the thing. Um, all the movements I mentioned, they have their place sometimes. <laughs> um, there are some movements that don't. I just don't see in a powerlifting program. I think you can completely forego them. Um, and there have been, you know, <sighs> man, I don't even know if you guys know who Greg Knuckles is because it might, like, I don't know how old you guys are that follow me. Um, Many, many, many years ago, I don't even know how many years ago, I remember, um, I think it was just after he totaled like 1800, he was talking about like, I've done it, I've done, I can't even believe that I remember this, he's he's like, I've I've seen good results with, with certain accessories, I've seen good results just doing SPD, um, and basically just saying like at a certain point you're probably not going to benefit from that new flashy accessory as much as you need as much as you think right and for me um you know you guys hear me talk about everything comes at a cost so if you're going to add something in um what are you giving up can you add it in without giving anything up is it you know but then at that point how how far away are we getting from the comp lift and what are we working on right so lifter asked me about an accessory and I tell them, um, you know, I don't really see a place for that in your program at the moment. And, but I'm not going to be so close minded as to tell you, you can never do this movement. Let's, let's do what we're doing this month. Let's try that out. And if I see a place for it, and if your body shows me that you in particular may need some additional hypertrophy or some additional work with a movement like that, um, then we can do it. You know what I mean? But it's just one of those things where anytime you say that you're never going to do something, any potential benefit you're going to get from that thing, you're, you're obviously excluding it, right? <clears throat> so you don't want to, you don't want to just like write certain things off unless it's, you know, something that you've tested and you're like very sure of it. So, um, I explained to them, you know, what I just told you guys. And if, if it's, it's a little bit more complex than just the movement and how it affects their training, because when we coach people, we coach humans and humans are very mental. They're very cerebral. They have belief which can give them willpower. And there's a lot of benefits that can come um, from certain things, certain movements that you add in. Like maybe the, the movement doesn't actually hurt the lifter that much, doesn't take away from their ability to recover from the comp lifts, but it puts them in a really good mental state or it makes them believe or think that that this movement is going to contribute to a large portion of the games which 
we already know that like most of your progress is going to come from your comp lifts. And I think that, I mean, honestly, if you look at a lot of programs, if you did a challenge where you, where you said you, you get three working sets, hell, two working sets, that's it. I bet you, you can make some good progress, right? You can make some pretty damn good progress. We have those additional sets in there because we want to kind of reinforce what we're doing and really just kind of top it off, make sure we're getting good gains out of our work. But, you know, like your body's going to give most of its effort to the first couple sets, uh, you know, assuming you're training with some kind of RPE, obviously if you program it opposite to where you're ascending your RPE, then, you know, it's going to be maybe towards your later sets. But anyway, there's, there's benefits to assigning a movement or certain things that can exceed just the movement itself. And I'm very aware of this. And if I can do something for a lifter in a way that's not gonna like mess up their mentals and allow them to like stay on track, uh, then I'll do it. You know what I mean? Um, so I told them, I said, look, if you really, really, really want it, I could put it in. Um, but my plan is X, Y, Z and you let me know. And then they said, hey, I trust you, you know, uh, obviously you know what's up. Like, I'll just do the method that you want me to do. And honestly, if my lift goes up, I don't really care. Right. I, I, you know, I, it's usually what I described it as. I see someone on social media that's like promoting something or really hyping up something. And then the lifter thinks like, oh, I need this. Like, okay. So let me give you guys an example. Right. And I was joking with Keiko about this the other day. What if I had John? Obviously, he's the fucking best bencher, right? What if I had John? Mind you, he's such a good bencher that he's able, for the last, like, many meets, he's been able to, like, I don't I actually don't even remember the last time he didn't take the world record bench. I can't even remember that. Like, it, like the, the streak of, his, of his be him beating his own world record bench is, like, fucking crazy right now. And I... I could have him put fucking chains, you know, put chains on the bend on a close grip accessory. Um, hell, he could figure out how to tie the chains on to, to dumbbells somehow and just like really push that and then show him hitting world record benches. And there's going to be people that think, oh my God, I need to do like chained, you know, close grip if I want to get my bench up. Now, of the, of the meme movements, I actually think, <laughs> I mean, the chain is like not horrible, right? Compared to like a band, which is like completely changes everything. Um, you might as well do, might as well do a Smith machine and put bands on it, uh, or, or any machine that gets harder, the more you press away from the starting point. But do you guys get what I'm saying? Like that wouldn't be truthful. And that would kind of be like, Hey, I want to sell people something. So I'm going to add this hyped up movement and then sell like sell these chains or whatever. You know what I mean? So you just have to, you have to just like observe and understand like, oh, that's interesting that that works for him. And my experience has never really worked for me. Um, and then just kind of go from there or, you know, bring it up to your coach and maybe they say, oh, that's a good idea, whatever. So. I just wanted to share that with you guys. I don't think, you know, when you're choosing your accessories, again, you want to make sure that you understand, like, what are you trying to achieve by adding this accessory? I would say if you're a newer lifter that does not have a lot of muscle mass, or you've kind of been in a weight class for a really, really, really long time, um, and you're about to move up, then it would probably benefit you to have a little bit more variety, especially in your off season. And even when you are, you know, usually I say like if you're already an established lifter, you know, you have tons of muscle, uh, doing those little extra little movements, like maybe it's good for injury prevention, stuff like that, maybe a little bit more mobility, good blood flow. It's a way to like work the muscle without working the muscle the same way you would the comp lift. But you're doing that for like more of a recovery reason or preventative reason. 
as opposed to this is going to add 50 pounds to my bench. You get what I'm saying? So yeah, that's, that's something you need to be aware of. I just, I don't know. I don't understand what the fascination is with, um, you know, accessories, like just some people just really like love accessories and they like hyping them up. And I think, you know, that's fine. And I think, like I said, if you compete twice a year and you're like six months out, you know, for that month, you could, you could just have like a skeleton powerlifting movement type of thing. Maybe you're benching once or twice a week. Maybe you're squatting once a week and you're not even deadlifting and you could just mix it up, you know? And I think that's a good way to add muscle to areas that you kind of neglect during the year, maybe work on some injuries and put yourself in a really good position to sort of transition back into the comp lifts and really just, you know, have a good prep. So that's kind of, that's kind of like where my head is at with that. Uh, let me know if that made sense. If you guys are able to take something away from this video, please let me know. Um, yeah, I just want, I just want to really hit home. Don't, don't just ride off certain movements unless you, that you put a little bit, you know, more into them, but understand that your goal, if you are here for powerlifting is to increase your ability to, you know, lift the squat bench and deadlift. And, you know, to do that, you need to stay healthy, which is why a little bit of variety might be good, but also you need to put most of your work especially when you're in prep into the comp lifts. That's where your, you know, money is going to be made, if that makes sense. Anyway, I hope everybody's doing good. Uh, yeah, counting down the days until February. It's going to be epic, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.